page 14, Etude in C minor, opus 10, number 12, also known as the Revolutionary Etude. It's a very famous etude. I've been playing this etude for ages. Let's take a look at it. This is an interesting arrangement. This is really an etude for the left hand. At the beginning, now three flats, keep that in mind. They're suggesting you start on third finger. That puts your little finger here. I find that a little awkward, and I also find it quite unnecessary. So anytime I get these notes and this pattern in this arrangement, I'm changing the fingering to two, three, four. And that puts the fourth finger on that. E flat, and then for the half note E flat, I'm changing it to the third finger. So there are two E flats next to each other. When you have that, I like to, if possible, use different fingers, and I can here. I play it with the fourth and then immediately the third. Like so. And I'll do that throughout this, throughout the piece. Then going on, on the G's, on the repeated G's, I recommend a 1-2-1. One, one. Anywhere else this appears, the same thing, 1-2-1. One, one. Going on, second line, it's an A natural there. Going on. bottom, the last two measures down there. The sixteenth note is a two and then immediately a three. And same fingering anywhere else in this piece, you just take a pencil and pencil it in. And that takes us over to page fifteen, third line down. Now we're here, you come out, you're here, now it's here. These are all and then for the F, the 16th note F at the end of the line is a 2. And for the half note, the next note, F is a 3. So it's 1, 2. Then the last measure, C flat, F flat. And you're going to do this 2, 3 again on the E flat. It's on the next page. You got a quarter rest to come up. And then B natural. Third line down. They're saying a four here. I find that a bit awkward. These are the weak fingers and it's nice to use them. It's a, but I prefer a three on the E flat. I'm still going to use a little finger on the F. Because I can do this more easily than this. So I'm going to. So I'm going to use three, five, three, two, five, and then a two, reach down. And I do a one, four. You can do a one, five, zero, but I like four. And for the next measure, still a one, four. Because these. Connect these. And then one four again. Now they're telling you one four. Oh. The last two measures. F chord. And an F minor chord. And then the last two chords is an F G C. And then an E natural G C. Accented and fortissimo. I'll come back to that. Let's talk the left hand. Now left hand has these arpeggios and we need these as legato as we can. Can't always but we'll do the best we can. At the beginning watch the fingering. Yes I like that fingering very much. And you're going to get this wherever. Use the same fingering. Second line, second measure on page 14. measure on that second line, that G is tied. Just use their fingering, it works. Now, 
last measure on page 14 carefully. It's a little awkward, but this kind of fingering and situation you're going to run into in piano, so it's kind of important you learn to do it. So I would encourage you to don't shy away from this. So it's here 2 on 4, then come down with a thumb. See, that's the hard part. Do the best you can. There is in the arpeggio videos, I talk about a tremolo exercise where you get this and you just go back and forth between the two notes because over time your muscles get accustomed to that and it's not quite so uncomfortable. So you're here. So it's all legato with the fingers. because I'm using a little finger on the G each time at the top of page 15. That's all right. Then that takes us down to the third line in the second measure, D flats. This is one you may not be able to get legato. I can do it though. Here, that's a stretch. If you can't, just lift up, move. Just make sure it's rhythmically even. One and two and. Watch out on the last line. It's up to there. And then the last measure. C flats. F flat. Everything's flat. I so love flats. So you work on those. If you can, do it legato with the fingers. On the top of page 16. Again, C flats. Now it's an F natural. That's a bit of a stretch back to here. Fourth finger, second line, first measure. Fourth finger on the D. Again, we're back to this. Gotta do it. Third fingering is fun. Last line here. Working off so the hands are working okay, and then put them together very, very slowly. It's here. See the, the E flat comes on up when you play the dotted eighth note in the right hand. So it's here. Second measure, going into the third measure, lift up the right hand, it's a new phrase. And now watch the rhythm, it's one and two. See? Studying this a long time ago, back in the 70s, and the teacher gave me a big long lecture on how to accent notes and blah 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 blah. It was this piece, and she said on these, the accent goes on the longer note here, because it doesn't always, sometimes it goes on the short note, but it goes, ba-dum, it's like the short note is like a, a pickup to it, ba-dum, to here. And make sure you do that, because a lot of people don't do that in this piece, so it's irritating. Especially in, uh, it's like over at the top of page 15 for the right hand, those last two measures, those last G's, those last notes, it's here, ba -ha, ba -ha. that's what we want to hear. Ba so make sure you feel that accent on those long notes, otherwise you tend you want to hit accent the first note. Uh, 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 uh. So starting with the second line on page 15, you're here and you're coming up. Ah, 
come off of it. Now here, Chopin has some interesting harmonies sometimes. And we're getting there. Mm -hmm. But it's 16 at the top, you're here. some dynamics and phrasing and try and do something with this. It has this statement reply thing going. At the beginning you're loud. It's the right hand. Don't let the left hand overpower it because the left hand is really busy at least in the, in the real thing it is so you have to be careful with the left hand. Now it's soft. theme again. in the left hand at the sec uh, third line last measure you have G flats and the next measure they're G naturals weird but that's what it is your hands are big enough you can change the fingering and do a five two one on the last line there that first measure otherwise you gotta go the pedal will help us here, but there, just be careful on that. Page 16, we're still medium loud here. Sixteen, third line down, last measure, left hand. I don't like that fingering. I prefer this fingering. Two, three, two, one. That's the chord. That's the fingering for it. You can do that if your hand's big enough. Just reach up. That's the hard one. So you don't have to cross the thumb. Now, last line. Left hand, lift up before you do the uh, it's a phrase. And you're getting louder up, you're gonna crescendo up to a forte. Don't slow down. That's here. Accent, loud, that means very loud. And then at the end, there's staccato, their accent is fortissimo, which means it's extremely loud and as short as the piano will let you. Don't know why he ended it that way, but he did, and that's the way the, the real one ends with two big bangs at the end, too. Now, work that out with the hands. Get it all even so you've got things under control, and then we'll add the pedal. The pedal's going to mush things up a bit. So we have to be careful with the pedal. I suggest on the pedal we tone this down a bit. I know it's loud and meh, but we don't need the blurriness on the meh. So meh. at the beginning, push the pedal down like this showing you there. And I 
would lift it up when I play the E flat in the left hand so I don't pedal these. It's a contrast and it's soft, so it's this way. doing it the same way throughout this piece anytime this pattern is. I'm, I'm not pedaling the soft part, just the loud part. So the second line you're here. Now at the end of the second measure, second line, lift the pedal up with the right hand, it's a new phrase. I don't pedal that third measure at all. Pedal again until the second measure of the last line. There. And in the last measure, I only pedal the first beat. I want to hear the. We have a phrase break. I want to hear that. At the top of page 15, the first measure and a half I pedal. it up for the now, third line down you can pedal this part in the third line second measure don't pedal the last beat Last line on page 15, don't pedal the last beat in the first measure. And the uh, last measure, don't pedal the last beat. Huh. I left it up on beat 3. On page 16, lift it up on beat 3. Now here, if you want to connect the A flat to the B flat, you'll have to push the pedal down as or after you play the A flat, and then change it when you play the B flat to connect those two notes. So it's now for the starting on the second measure, the first line there on page 16, and for the, all, all the second line, I pedal every two beats. And go ahead and legato pedal this. This is a different style than we were doing. And then on the third line down, I wouldn't pedal that measure. There, so it's clean. If you pedal it, it's this. Ugh. And then for the second measure, you can pedal that measure every two beats. The last measure, third line, every two beats. And then for the last line, I don't pedal the first measure. I want to hear a break in the left hand between the C and the A flat. And I don't pedal these eighth notes. And then for the chords, the last four chords at the bottom, it's a different style of pedaling. This is not lag pedaling or overlapping pedal. The pedal comes down with right, with the hands at the same time. It's, and it comes up with the hands too. The pedal and the hands all work the, together. And again, there. The idea is as we play these chords, we're releasing the overtones just for an instant. And we want the overtones immediately, not after the tone starts. You see, if you push a note down and then the pedal, you're starting the note first and then the overtones come in. It kind of... Uh, but when something like this, we want it... Boom! Now, ideally, you push the pedal down before you play the notes, and that way the, the overtones are there saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, and then you do it. It's another way of doing it with loud chords. We don't really have time on all these chords to do that, so we just push the note, the pedal down with the notes. Get it worked out. Go as slow as you got to do and get it all right. Got to have all the right notes, all the right rhythms, and try and work this pedaling out so it, it doesn't get too blurry. If I pedal it the way they're saying to pedal it at the beginning, it sounds like this.
don't mind that, pedal it that way. I think it sounds terrible. Now the speed, it says Allegro con fuoco. Fast with fierceness, fury. Well, it's revolutionary. You'll find recordings of this and get it out, but it moves. So you gotta have it all worked out and it, 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 it just moves. Now, it's gotta be your fast and furious, not my fast and furious. You work it out on your own. So. third line on page 15 where it changes a little bit. It's still fast and furious. We want to hear the top note in the right hand, that's the melody. So you, you just got to work it out. No matter what the left hand is doing, it's going nuts. We want to hear the melody in the right hand. At the top of page 16. Still loud here. Or... And then you're uh, there's no slowing down. It's just fast and furious all the way to the end. The last line. And you ramp. That's piece. It's, it's not exactly something you fall asleep to at night, you know? but 